All right, guys, we are now getting ready to get started in our next segment. This one is going to be about multiple web hosting, and I'm actually breaking this up into two separate videos. All right. This first one we're doing is how to host your website, how to host multiple websites on your QNAP server. Now, the very first thing that is super important that you guys are going to need to understand, and this is going to be important later in the second part where we start getting into SSL, is about ports. All right. Whenever somebody is going to an HHT port, you know that it's going to TPS, right? Default port is 443. These two are super important because that means that whenever somebody navigates to any website, if they if they put any one of these in there, right, it's going to trigger different ports. And this is important for port forwarding purposes because when you host multi, when you host these sites on your on your QNAP server, right, you need to make sure you're identifying the correct port of traffic that the request is coming from, and then you're forwarding it to the correct port, which you don't have to, and it's often recommended that you actually change the, the, the default ports for your QNAP server to where you're hosting the uh, site, which I'll kind of like go over later. And that's going to be, uh, again, important when we start getting to SSL cert. So let's get started. Very first thing you are going to do is you're going to navigate to the QNAP homepage. All right. So boom, right. I am signed into my QNAP server. All right, get into your QNAP server. All you're going to do is hit control panel. You're going to go to web server or right, applications, web server, click here. And then you are going to check the box. that's going to be enable web server because you might not have this enabled if you haven't done this before, but you're going to have, hit enable and then you can leave the, the defaults for the most part set. I would, and I strongly suggest though that you do make sure that the TLS version is the latest. You want it to be the latest. And we can do for secure connection HTTPS. I, I recommend that too, but only after you do the SSL search, which will be in the next video after this. But right now, so this is all good. So now let's actually get to the, the important piece, meat and potato though, virtual host. All right, guys. So what you're going to do here now is you are going to begin hosting your website. And the way you're going to do it is you're going to have an HTTP version, HTTPS version for your website. Now, if you want to, you can not bother with HTTP. However, if you do certain things like run Google ads, then this isn't going to work. You are going to have to have an HTTP version of your website in addition to HTTPS. And, and just also as a side note too, you can't have forced secure connection on HTTPS if you're choosing to do ads. If ads are not something that you want to do, you're not worrying about that, then for you know, the sake of better, better security, right? You can force it to always use H and only have an HTTPS version. But anyway, now let's get back to the, the setup, right? And this is, this will probably be much better if I actually create a new one for it. So I'm going to show you guys exactly what you do. So you're going to go ahead and create a host that host name, which they don't do a good job really explaining host name is going to be the actual URL that you want the person's web browser to have what to navigate to this particular website. Okay. So if you have a domain and you know what that domain name is and you also already have an idea what the subdomain name is going to be if you don't know what any of that is and you just know just your domain name then just use that but for me because as i already have my main domain and this is going to be a subdomain for me i am going to put uh, a subdomain name all right dot and then my actual domain. Now, what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna go here. So just to, just to read it, right? This part right here, right? Cause this is my main domain. Anything before that with a period, right? Is going to be a subdomain. So this is going to be, this whole thing is what the URL needs to be in somebody's web browser in order to navigate to the site. All right. That is important for you to understand. You can't just name this anything. I mean, you technically you could, but this, it needs to also be whatever somebody is going to actually put in their web browser. Now, the reason why I point that out is because when we start creating the port number, if you was doing this internally and this stuff didn't really matter to you, then you could just make sure that just whatever traffic is just put forwarded to the right port and it would load this. But since we're doing this for the sake of virtual web hosting and hosting multiple websites, right? 
these host names need to be unique and different. So with this, so the directory is going to be where I have the, the files at. So you should already know how to actually pull up the web folder in your QNAP server, right? So you get to your QNAP server and then it's going to be important that you have, I'm actually drop these two over here because these are part of my experiments and I don't want to get confused no more. What I'm going to do is I'm now going to create a folder in which I'm going to host my uh, files on. So on here, because I'm using, I'm a PHP user, right? I have an index.php file in there. This can be your index.html file. Doesn't really matter. Just understand like what it is that you're actually building towards, which since I'm going to be using database stuff, I'm going to use PHP here. So here we go, right? I have index.php and I have it on the web folder on the QNAP server. So now what I'm just going to do is that is the folder I'm going to select. See, here we go, card benefits, PHP, All right? And I'm going to go ahead and make this HTTPS. Now here's the thing, right? When it comes, when it comes to HTTP, typically it can only be like a, a, a two digit port and I think it can't go, it's, it, it's not safe necessarily to go under 80 just because like those ports tend to be already used by applications from my understanding. Same thing with HTTPS, you don't want to go on an E443 as those ports I believe are, may or may not be used. Again, I don't know if quite precisely because I'm not really a, I don't use too many applications and different ports and all that good stuff. So for the sake of this, right, you want this to be whatever, whatever port beyond those numbers. So for my HTTPS website, right, I use 8082, right? This is just an example, just like you can see here. So I use 8082. And just to show you guys, I'm only going to have the HTTPS version just so you can really see what I mean. All right. So here I hit apply and here we go. Right. There go the card benefits we just made. Right. Here's the HTTPS with its 8082 port. Now you'll notice that I have other sites with the same port. This is the secret to how you're going to host multiple websites on your one QNAP server. Right. They all need to be using the same port. And uh, they all need to have different um, host names, okay, for their protocols, right? So see, HTTPS has this, right? Uh, I have my main domain here for HTTPS, and then I have another subdomain. And then, of course, I got the HTTP version for these. I'm not going to do it for this one just so I can show you that you don't need to, you know, use HTTP if you don't want to. It's just needed if you're going to do that and whatnot. So now that we've done that, right, this is going to automatically be forwarding our, our website, should we be calling that port. Now, here's where it gets a little bit finicky. So the next thing you're going to want to do is you want to go to your router. So let me, whoa, right, I'm going to go to my router, which is typically an IP address unless you know the, unless you, you, you know, you, you know the host name. But you're going to go to your router and I'm using open, I'm using an a open work firmware running router here. But you're going to go to your router and you want to look for wherever you got the port forwarding. So in open war, it's firewall. So network firewall port forwarding. And here we go, right? So you'll see that I have two different rules, one for HTTP and one for HTTPS. And the way you're going to do it, looking at the HTTP, right? You can, you can name it, whatever protocol is going to be TCP. Unless you know, like if you're creating like some like application that uses UDP, then you want to like use that one as well, but you just really only need TCP, right? You can leave that default. The external port, like I was mentioning earlier, right? When people are doing HTTP, it needs is 80. HTTPS is 443. So that's the default port. This external port is the port of the internet traffic that's coming to your router. So you're going to identify, and if it's you know, coming to port 80, that's when this rule triggers, right? So that means when they go to your site and they do HTTP, it's going to trigger this rule. And then what you want to do is you're going to then forward it. It's going to, you can leave this again, this stuff default, but you're going to forward it to the IP address for the QNAP server, right? Which it'd really help if you have it static. You really should have it static because it'll just change every time you like restart or after a certain amount of time passes. But you're going to forward it to your your QNAP server, whatever the IP address internally is, 
and then you're going to select the internal port that you want this traffic to automatically uh, be sent to. Now to get it up and running, you could just set it to 80, right? Since right here, you see that the, the default server is going to be using the 80 port. Now that's where these had became important, right? Now, since I have the HTTP site versions on 80 port 82, that's why I put 82 for this particular rule. And same thing applies for HTTPS port 443. People who navigate to the HTTPS version of the site, right, is going to trigger this rule because this rule is looking for anybody that's using this said port. And then I have it going to port 8082 on the QNAP server, which corresponds with these. When QNAP receives the request, it's going to automatically push out whichever website, right, the user wants based off of the URL that they entered into their web browser. So after I, so since I already have this set up, you know, I, I would hit save, hit save and apply. If I now go to, we're going to, I'm going to start with that website there. So if I do, what was it? When I put it, credit card benefits, all right, password.com. And this shouldn't work, all right? Because now we need to do one more thing. And as you can see, right, it didn't work because we didn't actually do any domain registration yet. Now, the thing is, is that if you was trying to just connect to your uh, QNAP server directly, you could just feed it the IP address. So what you do is you do IP address colon, right? The, the, the two dots colon, and then the port number that you want the browser to navigate to. So the way that would look is that if I actually had these port numbers different, 83, 84, 85, for example, I could then actually just target my router's IP address and then actually colon that specific port number. And then the, the QNAP server would actually feed me that, that particular website. Now, if I have multiple, then this won't work. And it's just going to default to the, well, where am I at right here? It's just going to default to the, the main, whatever's in the root directory of that web folder, right? Which I do happen to have uh, something there. That's why this, that's why this came up. But now let's go ahead and let's just jump to the domain register here, which me, I use uh, Google, which they're getting ready to, to, to push it all off to Squarespace. But as you can see here, right, I own two domains here, right? We're going to click on the one that I'm using for this particular case here. Then here we go, we're going to hit DNS, click on DNS, and then here we are, right? And then you, you're going to uh, get to where we get to register the uh, actual URL that we want to use for our subdomain. So I'm going to create a new record. You see here I put credit card benefits, right? And then you see here right underneath it, it has the URL, creditcardbenefits.mydomain.com, right? And so then this is going to be a type A record, right? The type A records is what the IP address for the resources for the uh, you know URL is supposed to be at. All right, and so if you're curious where to get the IP address for your your ah oh gosh what is it called the IP address for your stuff, you know you're gonna go about this one of two ways. If you're already bypassing. If you're already bypassing the IP address from your internet service provider directly to OpenWart, then if you actually come here, you can get your gateway IP address right here. Now, keep in mind, right? If you're not paying for like a static IP address, like I am not, this number is going to change eventually at some point, whether you turn off on a router or power outage or just over time, right? I said, I'm doing this more for... This is just more for like testing purposes because I said I just wanted to show you guys how to be able to do this. You grab your IP address here. Another thing you can do too, if you want, if you're just doing all this straight on your, your internet service provider's router because you can always connect to their router and set up the port for it in, you can just go on Google and just say, and just ask what is my, well, what is my IP? And then boom, see, it's the same number. And that is your public IP address that is from the internet service provider you're using, whether that's, you know, Verizon, Spectrum, or whoever. Right? And as you can see, this matches with what OpenWorld is telling me since I already forwarded my stuff to OpenWorld or to my OpenWorld router. So 
we are going to go ahead and that is going to be the IP address we feed into the domain registrar and let's go ahead and save it. All right, so now as we see here, we updated DNS settings and this immediately refreshed it for us and tell us that the our request to URL is not found on the server. Now Google does a really good job like when you edit DNS settings for it to be just about instantaneous. However, because of the nature of the of DNS, right, it might take some time for it to truly propagate through the internet. So that's why we was able to just come straight up to it. Now, remember what I said, right? We are only doing HTTPS for our for our little internal site here. So let me just HTTPS colon slash slash, and then let's hit credit card benefits. And look at that. Now we're getting a different thing. It says your connection isn't private. Attackers might be trying to steal your information at this URL, right? That we just created. And if I hit advance, it says continue to credit card benefits dot the domain name dot com. So let me try it. So if I click on it and look at that, this site is now in a construction where we bring you about. So this is my index.php file, which I can, I'll just go ahead and just quickly show you guys this right here. So that is the index.php file that I have on uh, that site. So it is now officially live. And like I said, if you wanted it to come up on HTTP as well, right, which we're going to go ahead and we'll do, all you're simply going to do is you're just going to run through the exact same things that we just did for HTTPS and just make an HTTP version, which I'm going to go ahead and do a quick. I'm just going to go ahead and grab this copy and close that, make a new one, same URL, same folder, make sure I click the right one. And then the HTTP port that we're using, hit apply. And I said, if I wasn't running ads, I'd actually just keep it at, I personally would just keep it at HTTPS because if you actually would then just click on the, this check, this check box, it's gonna automatically push them towards the HTTPS version. But yeah, so that's that. And that's about it, guys. So we, we, we got the multiple websites hosted. As you saw, I was able to get the HTTP. I was able to get the HTTP on it and it's seeing it is working without a problem. Next video is going to be how to now get your SSL certificates for this for these websites, which I'm gonna show you two ways to do it. One is gonna be when you wanna name them out direct, specifically the, the domains, subdomains, which is typically the easiest. And then the other one is going to simply be how to use the wildcard modifier, which would be a little bit easier because then you don't have to do this for every new site that you're trying to make. And there's a little bit of an extra step to it with QNAP, particularly with the way to implement it. But like I said, that'll all be in the next video. So like and comment if this video helped you or if you need help, I'll do my best to keep a lookout to see if anybody needs any additional information. And like always, guys, you know, we keep these, uh, we keep these tutorials rough, live and rough.